huge fan of the cyberpunk aesthetic. I listen to synthwave or cyberpunk when I'm working. I love the game when it came out with all its bugs, though I didn't find that many. They've really created a very immersive world that I find myself very fascinated about. So let's create a cyberpunk apartment. The most important thing is reference. Look at Google Images or Pinterest for inspiration and find some images that fit your style that you're going for. Next, drag and drop your image into FSpy. You can watch my video up here that shows you all the details about FSpy, how to download it and how to install it in Blender. But basically, we are going to align the X and Y axis with the lines in our image. Follow the lines in your image as closely as you can and find different points so that your camera can be estimated better. You can also use the 3D guide and XY grid flow to visualize where your flow will be in the scene. Then you can save the FSpy project with a name that you can find easily. Then in Blender, go to import FSpy and import your saved FSpy. It gives us a completely matched camera from our reference image to work with in Blender. Now you can start modeling. I used a very basic plane to make the floor and then extruded parts of it to make the steps, the walls, pillars, etc. Add a ground plane and scale it up in your scene. Then tab into edit mode. Add loop cuts and start extending the plane to match the dimensions of your room. If you're not designing the assets for a game, then the topology doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just designing this for a short film of mine, which will be rendered in Blender. So for the purpose of this tutorial and the scene, it's perfectly fine to use loop cuts, extrusions, etc. to model your room. Add another plane and move it up to form your ceiling. Extend architectural features from your reference image like corridors, pillars, windows, walls, etc. Then I wanted to add an archway. So I added a cube and scaled it up to fit the corridor. Extruded along the length on one side. And then just used another cube with beveled edges and a boolean modifier on the first cube to cut out the archway. The specific details will differ in your reference image, but use your imagination and model the interiors as efficiently as you can. After this, I selected all the walls and added a solidify modifier to give them some thickness and avoid any light leakage. Then I selected the faces that were supposed to be the windows, added loop cuts and made different window panes by beveling the loop cuts and extruding them along normals. You can use Alt plus E to extrude along normal. I did the same thing for the ceiling to make the windows up on the roof. It's a good idea to start selecting faces and assigning different materials early on when you're modeling, otherwise it gets very confusing later on. Also don't forget to visualize your room in cycles with some lights to have a feel of the room and what you're designing. For now I've just added two simple point lights. Let's see where we go from there next. Now the room is ready but it's quite empty so let's start adding some objects. I added a simple cube, scaled it up, inset a face and then beveled the corners to make a simple photo frame. Don't forget to check your reference image from time to time or you can also import it as a background image inside your camera to have it as an overlay when you're working. I designed a cabinet and then I wanted to design the hexagonal light that we see in the reference image. It's not the perfect way to do it but I added a Bezier circle, reduced the number of points to 6 to get a hexagon and then duplicated them, extruded them and rotated them to get an interesting pattern. Added a simple cone and an icosphere to simulate the light shade and the bulb inside it and extruded a small cylinder to show it hanging to the wall. Now I placed a point light inside the light shade. I increased the size and I really liked the shadows it was creating in the room. I made the lights a little warmer at this point. Well, it seems like I skipped a few steps, but that's not so. I'm just experimenting with the materials here. I wanted a wood material for the floor, some granite on the steps, a rug maybe that you can see in the red color. Whenever I need non-specialized materials, for example, wood, concrete, glass, plastic, etc. I just go to Blender Kit for them. It's an amazing free resource and you can check it out if you are not using it already. Whether or not AI will take our jobs, I don't know, but I use it as a tool. I went to Leonardo AI and made some images that I can use as background images in my scenes. Just import your image, add it to your photo frame and add a mapping node to position it inside the frame. That's a really cool way to have original AI-generated art inspired from your story or scene. 
Blender kit also has many amazing assets and models. So I just brought in some lights and placed them around the scene. And you can also see a hexagonal tech LED kind of pattern on the walls, which I really liked for a high tech apartment. This is your time to experiment and let your creativity shine. Get into the mind of an interior designer and make a really functional looking home or just make it cool and neon -y and cyberpunk. I was also not going to model all the buildings in my background. So I used Leonardo and generated some cyberpunk city skylines. Bring in the image to your scene, scale it up, move it back and make it an emission texture and give it a high emission strength. Now I want to give a shout out to Sketchfab which is another resource I use all the time. They are amazing CC0 and other CC licensed assets to use in your scenes. I browsed around Sketchfab and found some futuristic furniture models. I brought in a couple of couches, a coffee table, a plant, moved and placed them in my scene to fit my layout. There is a very handy Sketchfab add-on that you can download from the link in the description and just import Sketchfab models directly into Blender without downloading a zip, extracting it, importing the FBX or OBJ and so on. After that, I added a cushion and some bolster pillows to make a cozy sitting corner on the floor. The scene I'm originally making this for depicts a party after hours, so that makes sense. But how will it be cozy without blankets? So I added a plane, subdivided it, added collation on the pillow objects and made the cloth drop from a height to make it deform over the pillows to make it look like a blanket. You can increase the quality, add self collisions and increase the quality of collisions to get better results. The Sketchfab plugin makes it so easy to just copy a link, put it in your add-on and you get the model inside Blender. No living room is complete without a TV, so I added a large TV into the scene. In the shader editor, replace the image on your TV screen and add any custom video of your choice. Set it to cyclic, auto refresh and the number of frames to have a moving video play on your TV screen. Then I browse through Sketchfab to find some more assets to place in the scenes. Sometimes it's just a rapid hole like online shopping. I just keep browsing through different models on Sketchfab. After adding some tables, bottles, glasses, etc. It resembles an after party scene. This is the final scene that I have. The props and materials definitely could use more photorealism. From the outside, it's just a cube with some cool materials and an image texture as the background buildings. And that's how I made this scene in Blender. Go create your scene now and share them with me. Follow and subscribe for more tutorials every week.